All right, in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on the manufacturing process and the accumulation of costs within the manufacturing process. We're going to take a deeper look into materials and labor, and we're going to review the differences between the direct versus indirect. So let's start with materials. With direct materials in particular, these are costs that are directly associated with the job. And when I mean costs, they're material costs. So these are materials that we needed for that job that are directly associated with that job. An example for us is this car repair shop. We need oil that needs to be put, new oil that needs to be put in the car that the customer gets to take with them when they drive their car off. So it becomes a direct material. Those five quarts of oil are directly traceable to that car, to that job. This is different than indirect material. Indirect materials are needed, but not maybe directly associated. So follow my line site here. Um, let's say that as I am, uh, fixing this car and putting new oil in it and putting new filter, um, I get my hands dirty. So what do I do? I grab a rag and I try to take off some of the used oil or the new oil, whatever it might be. Uh, that towel is not directly associated necessarily maybe with the job because I've been using it all day for many jobs, but it's a needed material. So it's an indirect material, but the customer doesn't get to take it and it's not directly traceable. Uh, or needed for that job. So the towel that we spend uh, uh, cleaning it, or if this is disposable towels, the towels that we buy are what we call indirect materials because they're not necessarily needed for the job, associated for the job, but they are indirectly needed to get the job done. So that cost would go into what we call indirect materials. Now let's skip over to labor for a second. Direct labor is labor that's directly traceable or directly associated with a job. So if I am, let's say, changing the oil, I'm directly associated with the changing of the oil. This may be different from, let's say, a supervisor who oversees a whole bunch of mechanics, but their job is to oversee the mechanics, so they don't do anything else. They oversee the mechanics to make sure the jobs are running on time, on schedule, and there aren't problems that are happening. Because of that, they, don't, they aren't associated with the job because they're just overseeing me, therefore they're called indirect labor. They are not traceable to a job, therefore they're needed, but they're not directly associated with the job, so they are indirect labor. Now, how does this all fit in the framework of accumulating costs for the manufacturing process? Well, they have to do with this idea of where do they go? Do they go and work in process with a manufacturing overhead? So let's talk about materials first. Um, let's say that I buy from an oil company oil for cars. So I might spend a thousand dollars of oil for cars. So what, what I do is I debit raw materials inventory for a thousand dollars, credit accounts payable because I'm going to pay them in 30 days. So raw materials goes up by a thousand dollars. Now let's say I also at the same time buy a hundred dollars worth of towels. These towels I use to clean my hands so that I'm not getting everything dirty around me. So I'm going to buy a hundred dollars worth of these towels. Well, they are raw materials. We didn't say that this was a direct material account. So I might put in raw materials a hundred dollars worth of towels. So how much raw materials do I have? Well, I have $100 of towels and I have $1,000 of oil. Now, I work on a car and so let's say I grab a new uh, five quarts of oil and that five quarts of oil costs us 20 bucks. So I'm gonna take 20 bucks out of raw materials because I'm gonna use it for the job, but that $20 gets transferred into WIP, work in process. So that gets transferred into WIP, $20. Now, I also need, let's say, a towel, and the towel costs us a dollar a piece. And so I grab a towel that I'm gonna use all day that's not associated with this job, but when I grab that towel, I'm removing it from raw materials inventory. I'm removing it from inventory. If I remove it from inventory, the cost has to move as well. Well, when I remove it from inventory, the cost moves from raw materials, one dollar, to manufacturing overhead. So it doesn't go in work in process because that dollar towel 
is not associated with a job. I'm going to keep it all day. I'm going to use it for five or six or seven or even 12 oil changes that I do in the day. So I can't directly associate it. I can't directly trace it to a particular job. Now, someone might say, well, couldn't you just take that $1 and divide it by 12 if you're going to work on 12 cars? I could, but that's a lot of work for me to do. So it's easier if I can just take it and stick it into the manufacturing overhead, and we'll see how we move that back and forth. Now, same thing, let's go back to the labor. Now, notice I don't have a T account here. That's because labor, remember, we can't create an inventory account like we do raw material. So for labor, I just have labor, but let's say it's my salary. I'm the one that's working on the job, so I'm working on the car, and I get paid $20 an hour, and it took me an hour to do that uh, oil change. And so where does that $20 go? Well, because that $20 is directly associated with that job, that $20 is going to go to WIP. Okay, so $20 will go into WIP. Now, my boss, on the other hand, gets paid $25 an hour, but he just oversees everything. He makes sure that there isn't any problem. So the question is, where does that $25 go to uh, when we pay him for his labor for, let's say, the day? Well, if he gets paid, let's say, $25, just like indirect materials, it's not directly traceable, so it's not directly associated with a job, we put that $25 in manufacturing overhead okay same deal there yes we could divide it up based on how many jobs that there are going out in that day but we don't we put them into manufacturing overhead now we'll ca calculate later on in manufacturing overhead rate in which we're going to take all of our actual costs for overhead and allocate little by little into WIP. So these will get transferred into WIP at some point based on a certain formula that we haven't talked about, uh, but that's what we're doing here. So in this lesson, we wanted to go over this idea of indirect and direct um, materials and labor and how we may put all materials in the raw materials inventory, but then when we actually use it, we're going to split them off into work and process and manufacturing overhead. And then for labor, we're going to have supervisors, we're going to have um, uh, direct labor, we're also going to have maybe janitors, let's say we have a restroom in the facility that uh, we all use as mechanics, and so we, we have to incur those uh, costs. Well, those would be overhead costs. It'd be a labor, but it'd be overhead costs. So um, that's what we're talking about in this lesson, all about indirect and direct materials and labor.